Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Bonita Granville, Otto Kruger, Kent Smith, and Walter Reed in Hitler's Children. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A few months ago, a bomb struck Hollywood. The bomb was a motion picture called Hitler's Children. I don't know what the producers expected, but they woke up one morning with a nationwide sensation on their hands. A picture with a modest beginning that suddenly exploded into one of the biggest hits of the year. That makes Hitler's Children a radio prize. We had a hunch it would be. And so, to use an old Hollywood expression, we, uh, we sewed it up well in advance. Tonight, we have three of the original players who appeared in the RKO picture. Bonita Granville, Otto Kruger, and Kent Smith. And with them, we present one of this town's very promising young actors, Walter Reed. Little Children is not a war play, but it draws back the curtain of mystery that surrounds the Nazi fortress and gives us a thrilling glimpse how the hate and horror and cruelty may be defeated from within. This is the time of year when I take on a rather dangerous job, and the popularity of Lux Toilet Soap doesn't make it any easier. The graduating classes at various schools and colleges around the country send in photographs of the girls in the class and ask me to pick the most beautiful. Fortunately for my peace of mind, the losers are always good sports, because the decision is usually a close one. There are many types of beauty among the girls in these photographs, but nearly all have one thing in common, a lovely complexion. Without that, the most classic features have no charm. And guarding this prize for the loveliest American beauties is our good friend Lux Toilet Soap. Now the curtain goes up on the inside story of Hitler's children. And here's the first act, starring Bonita Granville as Anna Miller, Otto Kruger as Colonel Henkel, Kent Smith, as Professor Nichols, and Walter Reed as Carl Brunner. The youth of Germany have dedicated their lives to the glory of Adolf Hitler. The crooked cross of the Nazis is emblazoned on their arms and in their hearts. They live for the Fuhrer. They are ready to die for the Fuhrer. They are Hitler's children, healthy in body, diseased in their young souls. Professor Nichols knew them well. He conducted the American school near Berlin back in 1933. Our building was just across the way from the German school. I used to watch them drilling in the park. Boys from 10 to 16, the, the young folk. They were taught to march together and to think together. Their minds were the same as the uniforms they wore. I remember one spring afternoon in 33, my boys and girls were playing ball in the yard. Suddenly there was a fight. When I ran out, I saw my kids and the German boys. They teared off in a grand free-for-all. Give me that ball, you! Give it to me! Stay, please! I will not stay, please! Boys, boys, stop this fighting! Hannah, stop it, I'm surprised. They started it, Mr. Nichols. I knocked out a good three-bagger, and they wouldn't give me back the ball. Stop this fighting. Stop it. Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith. No, Professor Nichols. I'm afraid someone may be hurt if this keeps up. If you call your boys off, I'll do the same with mine. Really, Professor Nichols, truly it is not my duty to interfere with a popular demonstration. A popular demonstration? Very well. You won't step in, I'll have to. Achtung! Who's it with the kind of eyes? Angreifen! Sorry I had to steal your stuff, Dr. Smith. All right, boys and girls, back into school. You've had enough recreation for today. I'd like my ball, if you don't mind. Well, suppose I do mind. Well, if you boys insist on another popular demonstration, just say so Here's and your I... ball, Fraulein. Thanks. Oh, my name's Carl Brunner. What's yours? I don't give it to strangers. And tell your Nazi friends to stay off our ground. <laughs> That's how it all began. A boy, a girl, a 
and an argument. But it didn't end there for either of them. Of course, the Nazi party took most of Carl's time. They taught him things like this. We shall win the true crown of glory like the knights of old. We shall die for Germany. We shall rest forever in the holy soil of Germany as conquering heroes of the pure. To die for Adolf Hitler is to live for Germany. Heil Hitler! And then in the afternoon, he and his friends would report for party duty. Forward, put! Yes, the party planned for everything in the life of a good young Nazi. Everything except the moment when a girl might be playing a piano and a boy might be interested. Carl came to the window of our music room that afternoon. Anna was practicing. Hello. You shouldn't be seen over here. What would Dr. Schmidt say? And dear Mr. Schickelgruber. You know, you play very well for a girl. <laughs> You're not mad at the piano, too, are you? Please don't be. You're a funny one, all right. Why are you always fighting with us all the time? I'm not fighting now, am I? You know, I can't figure you out. What are you doing here, anyway? I came because I like to hear you play. But more like you played the other day. You mean, like this? Yeah, like that. You know, sometimes you don't sound like a German at all. That could be. I was born in America. And you're an American? No, I'm a German. I'm proud of it. That's a strange coincidence. I was born in Germany. You were? Yes. But I'm an American. I'm proud of that, too. But if you're an American, what are you doing in Germany now? My parents love Germany. They wanted me to love it, too. So they sent me here to live with my grandparents for a while. Mom and Dad are still in New York. But, but how is it that you go to this American school? My parents wanted to be sure I'd come back an American. Do you really want to be an American? Want to be? Listen, my friend, I am an American, and if you have any objections, just put up your fist. Please, this is not another popular demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> and so the street fight stopped, and the picnics began. About every other Saturday, Carl managed to slip away with Anna and me. And we all got to know each other better in the lovely hill country, south of Berlin. We used to sit under the trees near a stream, and I'd read aloud for them. And so, he dreamed all his life that he might find the perfect moment. And toward the end of his days, he summed up his dream like this. If the whole world I once could see on free soil stand with a people free. Then to the moment might I say, linger a while, so fair thou art. Gee, that's beautiful. That would be a wonderful moment, wouldn't it? That's good poetry. But who'd want the whole world to be free? It'd never work. Well, the world's never had a chance to try it, Carl. But the dream's growing. This same poet expressed it in a simple line. And those who live for their faith shall behold it living. And those who live for their faith shall behold it living. Well, that's a little too fanciful for me. It almost puts me to sleep. A little splash of cold water on my face, and I'll prove to you where that American prophet of yours is just a dream. But it's not an American, Carl. It's by a German author named Goethe about a German hero named Faust. <laughs> oh, forgive me, Nicky. I'm a dunce. I ought to be thrown in the brook. Well, anything to oblige a guest. Hey! Yes, sorry, Carl. Hey, come back here. Go get her, Carl. Hey, Anna! <laughs> Oh, you think I can't catch you, huh? I'll show you. Carl! Carl! <laughs> Come here, now I'll... Carl, 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 wait. Anna, what's the matter? That, that boy on the ground there, he's hurt. Anna, come away. Don't you see? Someone has tied and gagged him. Left him here in the woods. Anna, I said come away. I've got to help him. No, leave him alone. What are you saying? I said leave him alone. This is none of our business. Are you crazy? But this boy is in pain. Listen to me, Anna. And try to understand... Look, even the boy is trying to tell you. Well, I'm going to take that gag off. I don't care what you say. There. Oh, please. Please leave me alone. Go away. What's happened to you? It's only a game. I was a spy and I was caught. And this will teach me not to get caught again. But how long have you been lying here like this? Oh, only a few hours. It's nothing. How old are you? I am nine, Fraulein. 
And if I come through this test well, I'll be taken into the young folks soon. Tell me, do you want to be untied? Shall we take off the ropes? Oh, no, comrade. I'll replace the gag. Thank you, comrade. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Carl, you... It's too shameful. It's too horrible. Anna. Anna, wait for me. Well, that was the last we saw of Carl for a long time. He was swept up in the storm. The storm that was sweeping through all of Germany. The new order was on the march, trampling life and liberty into the dust. By May the 30th, 1939, the fires of freedom were burning very low in Germany. But so far, our school was untouched. It was Memorial Day, and we gathered to celebrate. Anna was 20 now, the best assistant I ever had. As we stood there singing in the schoolyard, a car drove up and two Gestapo officers came towards us. They tried to interrupt our song, but I'm glad to say they were unsuccessful. Attention! This singing will stop at once! Close, oh, damn it! Close! Oh, I'll kill it! Professor Nichols? Yes? What seems to be the trouble, Sergeant? The Ministry of Education requires the instant dismissal from your school of all Poles, all Jews, all Lithuanians, and all persons of German blood. But this is an American school. We accept anyone who wants to come. I know nothing about that. Those whose names I read will fall out at once. Klein Seller, Kovac Martin, Rorschach Stevens, Horowitz Ivan, Miller, Anna. Miller, Anna! My name is Miller. Anna Miller. But I'm not a student. I'm a teacher here. You live with Mr. and Mrs. Max Miller, Klinik Strauss 137? Yes, they're my grandparents. They're German, but I'm an American. Nevertheless, you ought to fall out, too. Look here, Sergeant. Miss Miller's an American citizen. I refuse to allow I have my orders. If you have any objections, take them up with the lieutenant. Very well. Where will I find the lieutenant? Follow me. We followed him into the building. At my desk. My desk. There was a Gestapo officer. A lieutenant. He didn't look up. I couldn't see his face. Hey, Lieutenant, this is Anna Miller. Anna Miller, yes. Lieutenant, I demand to know by what authority students are being removed from my school. By authority of the Gestapo, is that sufficient? Not in an American school. The orders have nothing to do with Americans. They apply to Jews, Poles, and Lithuanians. We are also removing all persons of German blood immediately. But there are no Germans in this school. Anna Miller is here. Why, Carl. Carl Brunner, don't you remember it? Professor Nichols and, and Anna Miller from the school here. Carl... You were born in Germany, Fraulein? Oh. Yes. But I'm an American. Your parents were also born in Germany? Yes. The record is quite clear, Fraulein. We shall be pleased to look upon you as a citizen of the German Reich. Aren't you again overlooking the fact that her parents became citizens of the United States? She's here on an American passport. We are now in Germany under German law. Whoever is born in Germany is a citizen of the Reich while on German soil. Well, that's rather new and arbitrary, isn't it? Arbitrary? Is the professor implying that it is not an honor to be a citizen of the German Reich? It's undoubtedly a great honor for Germans. But the Amer American embassy may have another opinion about Americans. You may do as you wish about that, Herr Professor. Sergeant? Yes, sir, Lieutenant. You'll take Fraulein Miller with you. Wait. Where are you taking her? Where? I demand to know. That is also a matter between Germans, Herr Professor. The Reich will decide where and how Germans can best employ their abilities. Take her, Sergeant. <laughs> In a moment, Mr. DeMille presents Bonita Granville, Otto Kruger, Kent Smith, and Walter Reed in Act Two of Hitler's Children. Mr. Kennedy. Yes, Sally? I've been reading in the papers about all these plans. Tax plans and security plans, and... Well, I've been thinking. Good, Sally. So many pretty girls don't. There you go, not taking me seriously again. Now, here's what I thought. What's the matter with talking about our plans? What plan, Sally? Why, our 30-day complexion plan for women everywhere. Sally, I believe you've got something there. You mean, let's talk about the Lux Soap Facials Hollywood stars use. Yes, of course. And if women will give the Screen Stars Beauty Soap a trial for 30 days, they'll discover something. Wait, Sally, don't get to the results till you tell what the plan is. Now, just what do these ladies do for 30 days? Why, they take active lather facials with Lux Toilet Soap regularly. 
certainly will be glad they did, too. But, Sally, you haven't said how to take an active lather facial. It's so easy. You just move lots of the creamy Lux soap lather well into your skin. You rinse off with warm water and splash with cold, and then you pat your skin dry with a soft towel. And if a woman does that every day, Sally... She's just bound to be pleased with the way her complexion looks a month later. Especially if she takes these Lux soap facials several times a day... And always at bedtime. It's Lux Soap's creamy, active lather that makes this 30-day plan a success. That rich, smooth lather does a really thorough job of complexion care. Does it gently, too, because Lux Soap is so pure and mild. Well, Sally, the most famous stars in Hollywood say they find these Lux Soap facials are a wonderful help to softer, lovelier skin. And here's another nice thing about our Hollywood complexion plan. You can start at any time. Right, Sally. And tomorrow is a good time for the woman who thinks her complexion might be smoother and prettier. So here's our tip to these ladies. Why not put gentle Lux toilet soap on your shopping list right now? Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Hitler's Children, starring Bonita Granville as Anna Miller, Otto Kruger as Colonel Henkel, Kent Smith as Professor Nichols, and Walter Reed as Karl Brunner. <laughs> There is a song that Hitler's children sing. It says, Adolf Hitler is our savior. Our Hitler is our lord, who rules a brave new world. This is their religion, the worship of a man. This is the seed of Nazi culture, planted early in the youth of the land. And from such seed, the stem grows crooked, and the fruit is rotten. Carl Brunner, our friend, sent on our way. It wasn't hard to believe. I'd seen before the awful power of the Nazi system, the disease which infected the brains of their children. In the months that followed, I had no word from Anna. I tried to reach her by mail. I, I called on friends, party officials. And then, in desperation, it occurred to me that perhaps Anna's grandparents would know something. Who is it? It's Professor Nichols, Mr. Miller. Don't you remember me? Yes, yes, but please go away, Herr Nichols. We do not know anything. Mr. Miller, I must find out something about Anna. Please, Herr Nichols, not so loud. I beg you. It's better if no one keeps us talking to you. Mrs. Miller, you've got to tell me what you know. She came here that afternoon for some things, and then they took her away. That's all. She said she would be all right. She said we should not worry. I'm trying to find out where she is. I want to do something about it. Do something? What? Can anyone do? Well, at least you have the right to ask. No. One must never ask questions. Mr. and Mrs. Ruman down the street, they asked some questions about their grandson. He was in the army. They took the Rumans away. They said they were sick, very sick. They never came back. Yeah, yeah. They said they died in the hospital. But I know. They put them to sleep in the hospital. Mama. They put them to sleep with gas. Mama. They murdered them. Because they were too old and asked too many questions. Mama, please keep quiet. Fear. It was the same wherever I turned. Some terrible dread that froze people where they stood. And then I remembered Franz. Franz Earhart. If anybody could help me, I was sure it would be Franz. A brilliant, courageous journalist who was respected by all. Nicky. Hello, Franz. Well, this is a fine surprise. Franz, I've got to speak to you about something. It's, it's important. Uh, uh, please, if, if you don't mind, we, we just stay out here on the porch. You see, my boys are home this morning. Oh, two fine boys. But what they don't know, they won't tell to their troop leader. Franz, you mean you can't talk in your own house in front of your own children? Why, of course I can, my friend. Who said I couldn't? I merely said it's wiser not to. Well, my friend... What can I do for you? I'm in trouble. They've taken on our way. Well, now who took our way? The Gestapo? The Gestapo. Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. I, I can do nothing for you. Nothing? Franz, we, we just can't let a girl disappear without doing something. Not so loud. Good morning, Herr Earhart. Good morning, nurse. That woman is the nurse from the state. She has come to see the janitor's wife next door. Observe, my friend, how carefully the Nazis take care of their children. 
Good morning. Good morning, Frau Leonard. Good morning, Hans. Dear Hart. Good morning. Well, Hans, what do you want to be when you grow up? I shall be a leader of stormtroopers. And you, Fritz? I'm going to be a fire. I'll drop bombs on Germany's enemies. Very good. All is well here, Frau Leonard, I can see. Oh, please, nurse. Yes? Before you go, things are so difficult. My husband worked so hard and earned so little. We have so many... Oh, girls. there, there. You've nothing to worry about. Remember, Frau Lenner, when you have your fifth child, you won't overstate anything. You won't have to pay back the money the state loans you to get married on. The debt will be automatically cancelled. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! Come into the house, children. See, Nikki? The Nazi state is very generous. Yes. But you must not think it is unusual. That or the fact that I can't even talk in my own house. No, it is happening in every house and every street in Germany. And my friend, it's only child's play. Oh, that's no fun. Only child's play to what is about to happen. Franz, how can you stand it? You of all people. How can you be so complacent? Mm, my friend, you can get off a train before it starts or after it stops. But while it is in motion, I wouldn't advise it. You mean you pretend you believe in this and go on writing in praise of it? What would you have me do? I wouldn't make a very good hero. Well, then I... I don't suppose you'll help me. Help you, my friend. I can't even help myself. Very well. Goodbye, Frank. Wait. Uh, Nikki. in such cases, they usually send the girls to the labor camp, Rheinsberg. Is it a prison? Prison? No, not exactly. Well, then it shouldn't be too hard to arrange for an escape. I might even get her out of Germany. My friend, that would be a very unwise thing to attempt. How can I get permission to visit the camp? Oh, you couldn't. But as an American school teacher, it's possible you might get permission from the Ministry of Education to make a tour of the camps. Thank you, Franz. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye, my friend. <laughs> up your request for the various departments, Professor Nichols. Well, thank you, Dr. Graf. I should like to tour all of the, the camps in Germany. You know, Professor, not many foreign educators seem interested in our methods. <laughs> Perhaps they're afraid they might approve. <laughs> good morning, Graf. Oh, good morning, Colonel. Colonel Henkel, may I present Professor Nichols? How do you do? The Colonel is from the Gestapo, but he's an educator, too. A Rhodes Scholar at Oxford. And uh, this is the Colonel's aide, Lieutenant Brunner. Yes, we've met before. Oh, have you, Carl? Where? I had charge of the detail to remove some foreigners from the American school. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, Colonel, the professor is eager to gain permission to visit our labor camps. He's interested in studying our new educational method. Good. I must say, Professor, I admire the spirit of your inquiry. I sometimes think it would be interesting to go back to Oxford for a similar investigation. There'd be so many surprises in store for my English friends. I'm sure of that, Colonel Angle. Well, since the colonel seems to approve, we should have permission for you in a few days, Professor. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I left the office then, but I got no further than the street. A Gestapo officer took my arm and led me back into the building. To Carl Brunner's office. You know why I had you brought back, Professor? You will inform Dr. Graf and Colonel Henkel that you have had a change of mind about your educational tour. Why? Because I know that you're searching for honor. You must give it up. Do you understand? No, I don't understand. There are death penalties for many acts against the German Reich, Professor. I didn't know you were interested in my health. I'm not. I'm merely thinking of Anna's welfare. Yes, you certainly proved that when you sent her to a labor camp. A girl who never did anything physically harder than play a piano. Don't let words frighten you, Professor. A labor camp is not a prison. It's a place where young Germans make themselves fit for the duties of soldiers and mothers. It's an honor to go there. Oh. Do the inmates think so? Besides, Anna isn't in the labor battalion. Through my influence, she was able to get a position on the staff. Oh, so that's why you didn't expose me to Colonel Henkel. We will leave Colonel Henkel out of this. It might surprise him to know that a good Gestapo officer is interested in a girl who believes in freedom. It might surprise you to know that Anna's attitude about the new Germany is changing. If you persist in this search, you're endangering her position and yours. And perhaps yours? I warn you, Professor Nichols, if you... No use, Carl. I won't give up this search. I won't believe what you say until I see her. And I don't care what the penalties are. Suppose I could prove to you that she is happy and well off where she is now. Well, if you could prove it, yes. Very well, Professor. We'll visit her together. 
But you will please pretend that she is a stranger to you. You do not know her. I wonder if I will. Come here, Anna. Yes, Matron? You know Lieutenant Brunner, Anna. And this is Professor Nichols of the American Colony School. Oh. How do you do, Professor? How do you do? The Lieutenant has requested that you show him and Professor Nichols around the camp. I shall be glad to. Oh, before you go, Lieutenant, may I see you a moment? Of course. In my office, Lieutenant. Anna, I've been trying to find you for months. Oh, Nicky, it's so wonderful to see you. I've got to talk quickly. I'm arranging plans for your escape from here. We'll get you out of Germany through the underground. Oh, no, Nicky, please. We mustn't even think of it. Don't worry, Anna. If we plan it carefully, there there won't be any danger. But you don't understand. I I want to be here. Anna, you're still playing a game. It isn't necessary. I understand. I'm not afraid of the risk. No. No, I'm quite happy here. Are we ready for a line? Yes, Lieutenant. If you will both follow me. And finally, Professor, this is the rest home. Here the girls receive the finest attention the state can provide. You mean these girls are here voluntarily? They are drafted to serve just as men are in the Army, and they serve just as proudly. You will observe, Professor, that the rest home contrasts considerably with the other sections of the camp. As you have seen, they work hard and live simply to fit them for their duties. But when the girls come here, it is different. Nothing is considered too good for those whose children will belong to the state. Does the state also offer them the alternative of a home? where a husband and wife can bring up their own children. We have put aside the old superstitions, Professor Nichols. I, uh, I've heard enough. Thank you, Miss Miller. Well, we seem to have lost Professor Nichols. Yes. Yes, we have lost Nicky. Anna, I'm glad to see that you're beginning to understand our way of life. Thank you, Herr Lieutenant. And now I must return to my work. Oh, wait a minute. You've done very well here, Anna. I've recommended you for special study in geopolitics at the University of Berlin. It's a very great honor. And it will bring us closer to each other. You must withdraw your recommendation at once. Why? Because I hate everything this place stands for. Anna! I lied to Nicky because there's no way out for me. And I won't have him killed trying to find one. I don't believe you. You're a German. If you'd only give our way of living a fair chance... You can't give evil and rottenness a fair chance. It's too late to withdraw the recommendation now. You'll be called to the Ministry of Education any day. I know you won't be foolish enough to refuse the offer. It would be dangerous for both of us. Fräulein Miller, this is a rare opportunity for you. Not every girl is invited to study at the university. Thank you, Dr. Graff. With your training and education, well, someday you might even be sent back to America. As an espionage agent, Colonel? What's that? No, Fräulein. As an ambassador of culture, an ambassador of world culture. Unfortunately, Doctor, I must decline the honor. I don't want any part of the diseased new world you're planning for mankind. And I'm not afraid to die to prove it. Fräulein Miller! Uh, one moment. Who said anything about dying, Fräulein? Let me assure you the choice is no longer between life and death. Dying, my dear Fräulein, is a luxury these days. We must all live and work. And for those who will not work with the brain, we will find duties to fit their capacities. Sergeant? Yeah, Herr Colonel. Keep this young lady in custody until we give you further instructions. That's all, Fräulein. She was allowed to come very far for a person harboring such thoughts. Hmm? She was recommended and vouched for by your protege, Lieutenant Brunner. Oh, really? Uh, send in Lieutenant Brunner. He must be removed at once. Why? Why? Isn't it obvious? Oh, my dear Graf, now when are you going to learn that we must stop purging our best people? All men make mistakes, especially young men. If the party is to survive, the intelligent young men will be needed. Do you consider what he did an act of intelligence? I consider it the mistake of youth. Nothing more. Ah. Uh, Herr Colonel? No, Carl. Come in. Uh, Carl, you recommended a girl named Anna Miller for work at the university. Yes, Herr Colonel. Mm -hmm. I suppose you looked into her background, Captain? Yes, Herr Colonel. She was born in Germany, though she has lived in America. Her work at Rheinsbeck was considered excellent. 
she's regarded as a German, therefore there seemed no reason for not advancing her. Mm, that's sound enough. But the young lady only a few moments ago committed an act of treason against the state in this office. I allowed a moment of sentiment to misguide me, sir. I knew her as a young girl. I regret it, sir. <laughs> and uh, what do you think we ought to do about her? Hmm? There is no alternative. She must be sent to a concentration camp. Hmm. Well, I, I don't think such severity will be necessary. Perhaps a year on the labor corps will work out these silly notions. As you wish, Herr Professor. Tankle speaking. You have a young lady named Anna Miller being held in custody. You will transfer her from the staff to the labor corps at Rheinsberg. And I want a daily confidential report of her behavior. <laughs> Behavior report to Colonel Henkel. Anna Muller refused to show proper respect for the Fuhrer. Anna Muller must be forced to do share of the Labor Corps. Anna Muller expresses dangerous political thoughts. You say she's becoming worse, Frau Retter? Yes, sir, Lieutenant. She's a dangerous agitator. No corrective measures seem effective. All right. Thank you, Frau Retter. Good morning, Carl. Oh, good morning, sir. Congratulations. I have good news, Carl. Because of your fine work on the Targla case, I have approved a captaincy for you. A captaincy? Well, thank you, Colonel. My only hope is to prove myself worthy of the honor. Uh, I have no fear of that. You know, Carl, ours is a most important calling. The Gestapo is judge, jury, prosecutor, all rolled into one. And only the best minds should be permitted to administer such power. Men of great strength of character. Men to whom there is no other consideration than their duty to the state. And that is why I have sponsored you, Carl. Thank you, sir. Uh, by the way, uh, have you received any reports from the camp at Rheinsberg? Rheinsberg? Yes. About the uh, Miller girl? Yes, Colonel. Uh -huh. I have. And? What do the reports say? They're very poor, sir. They consider her quite dangerous. Mm. Carl, uh, there is no room for the sick in Germany. And the girl is sick in her mind. She is unfit to pass her type of thinking on to future generations. So I have recommended special treatment for her, Carl, at the Frauenklinik. The, the Frauenklinik? Yes. Have you any other solution, Carl? Or, uh, what would you do if you were in my place? If I were you, Colonel, I should do exactly as you will do. Hmm. Why did you come here? What do you want? Can't you leave me alone? Anna, listen to me. I came to warn you, you're in great danger, Anna. Carl. I don't care anymore. I don't care. They can't do anything more to me than I fear. Oh, they can, believe me. You must write Colonel Henkel at once. No. You must tell him you've made a grave mistake. No, Carl. That you're eager to serve your country. But it's not my country. It never will be. Anna, be sensible. Ask for another chance. If you fight a storm that can overwhelm you, you've got to ride with it as far as it goes. Is that what you've done, Carl? Please, Anna, there's no time left for discussing ideologies. You must do what I ask you now or you'll be treated as a dangerous political enemy. I told you, Carl. I can't be frightened anymore. Can't you? Anna, have you ever heard of the Frauen Clinic? Do you know what happens to women who are sent there? I heard, yes. It could happen to you, Anna. It will. Unless you do as I say. No. Even that holds no terror for me now, Carl. If it's a choice between rearing a child for Hitler or... I'm never having a child at all. Oh, my darling, my darling, Anna. I love you so much. I love you, Carl. But it's too late. It was too late when it began. No, darling, no. We must only think that we love each other. Carl, do you remember? It was so long ago. If the whole world I once could see on free soil stand, with the people free. Then to the moment, might I say, 
linger a while. So fair thou art. Oh, God. Anna. Anna, I can't let them hurt you. There's no other way. There is one. It would protect you and satisfy them. The most they demand is that you have a child for the state. God. We love each other, darling. We'll be married. Don't you see how wrong that is? How deceitful. I only see that I love you, Anna. It wouldn't be our child. It would be the state. Just another child to die for Hitler. Please, Anna. That's part of the confusion we mustn't think about. Each generation must look out for itself. Oh, no, no, Carl. That's where you're wrong. That's where you and Hitler and Goering and Goebbels and all the rest of you are wrong. Each generation must look out for the generation that comes after it. If our fathers and their fathers before them hadn't all hoped a little, dreamed and worked for the ones that came after them, why, we'd still be a pack of savages. That's the world you're working for, Carl. That's the world I won't bring a baby into. I'll never give in to them. And then my son and his son won't either. I won't, Carl, I won't! I won't! Pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Bonita Granville, Otto Kruger, Kent Smith, and Walter Reed in the third act of Hitler's Children. I'm pretty sure nearly everyone feels like this once in a while, along about six in the afternoon. Yes, tired is what we mean. And if you're a busy woman with war work added to your regular duties... You know what that end-of-the-day feeling is like. But now, listen. Well, that expresses how differently you'll feel a little while later if you follow a simple beauty prescription. Clever women have discovered... When I'm all tired out and have a date to keep, my Lux toilet soap bath is so refreshing. It gives me a real beauty pickup. Women find that Lux soap's rich active lather carries away the day's dust and dirt in a twinkling, leaves skin fresh and really sweet. Yes, I love that creamy Lux soap lather. It's so rich and quick, even in hard water. There's something truly luxurious about a Lux soap bath. I see why screen stars call it a beauty bath. Well, you know, using this fine complexion soap as a daily bath soap, too, was Hollywood's own idea. Screen stars say active lather makes them sure of daintiness. Sure, their skin is exquisitely fresh. I, I'm keen about the Lux Soap perfume, too. It's the kind I like, not too heavy, and it leaves a lovely, delicate fragrance on my skin. Well, <laughs> it makes me feel sort of glamorous. And the fact that Lux Toilet Soap is hard-milled, made to last and last, is something I know you wise and thrifty buyers will be glad to hear, too. If you're not using Lux Toilet Soap for your daily beauty bath, why not try it? You're sure to like the sense of well-being this luxurious bath will give you. The way it leaves your skin smoother, softer, fresh and sweet as a flower. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. We'll put our stars on the witness stand when the play is over. Now the third act of Hitler's Children. Starring Bonita Granville, Otto Kruger, Kent Smith, and Walter Reed. <laughs> It was a few days later that Anna escaped from the camp at Rheinsberg. She hid that night in a farm wagon while the soldiers searched the woods. Then in the morning, she found herself outside a church. Here was refuge, she thought. With her cape thrown over her head, she stumbled through the cathedral doors. The bishop was in the pulpit. My dear good people, I shall not speak to you this morning upon the gospel for today. For today, the gospel must speak for itself. 
I shall speak instead upon a very different gospel. The gospel according to Adolf Hitler. For the time has come, my friends, when you must choose once and for all between the gospel of Christ and the gospel of the Nazis. There can be no compromise between what is right and what is wrong. There is not one set of rules for Germans and another set of rules for the rest of the world. The rules are the same for everyone the world over. We must love the Lord our God with our whole heart and with our whole soul. We must think what we live and live what we think. And if to do that is to die... Stop! There's a girl hiding here in this church. We'll please dismiss your congregation at once. We will stand guard on the doors as they go out. You up there! You hear me? Tell these people to go home! And so, my dear friend, if to live what I think is to die for what I think, why then I say, let me die, but I am still proud. I am a German. I will ask once again, dismiss your congregation, Bishop. Very well. Take this man to the Gestapo. No, no way. I'm the one you want. I, I'm here. Please don't take me. Don't. Well, Fallon, who helped you escape from camp? No one helped me escape from camp. Who helped you to get from camp to the church? No one. I just got a ride, that's all. With whom? I don't know. Some farmer. I never saw him before. He didn't even know I was in his wagon. Why did you take refuge in the cathedral? Are you a Catholic? No, I, I'm not. Then why did you go there of all places? Were you to meet someone there? No. Had someone promised to get you out of the country, perhaps? No. I advise you to tell us everything that you know. Please, Colonel Henkel, I assure you this young woman and I have never met before. A likely story. I tell you, Colonel, this bishop is no better than all the rest of the traitors. Even while we were looking for this girl in his church, he was denouncing the Fuhrer from the pulpit. Do you deny this, Bishop? No. I have always denounced the Fuhrer, but I am no part of a conspiracy. Whatever I may say or whatever I may do is said and done in the open. Please. You must believe me. I did go to his church to hide, but it was my own idea. And when I saw others might be hurt because of me, I, I surrendered. Anna Miller, you've given us a great deal of trouble. Ordinarily, you'd be kept in solitary confinement for an indefinite period. But under all the circumstances, some different discipline is clearly indicated. Tomorrow morning, you will receive ten lashes in the presence of the entire camp. Colonel Henkel, I do not know this girl, but I must protest for her as I would for one of my own people. Has it come to this that you must now whip women as well as men to bring about the new order in the new Germany? And after the ten lashes, treatment at the Frauenklinik in Berlin. <gasps> Courage, my child. They're only trying to frighten you. I, I'm not afraid. I remember what you said. We must die for what we think. God bless you. God keep you, my I got out of the camp. Father! Father! <laughs> Is there nothing you madmen will stop at? I bow my head in shame that any man who calls himself a German should beat a woman. But this, this frown clinic, as you call it, is the supreme blasphemy of all. How dare you? How dare you take away that which is not yours to take? Before God, we are all free. We have certain rights, rights which were never given to us by the state. Tell me, Colonel... Who made you? Who gave you the breath of life itself? Was it the state? Or was it something mightier than the state? You must not attempt to trick me with your questions. If I must choose between Christianity and the state, I am glad to choose the state. Christianity had its chance, and it failed. When the time is right, 
we will break with it completely once and for all. No wonder you take away the breath of life so readily. The breath of death is already upon you. You may go now, Bishop. Uh, just one question more, Colonel. If you whip that poor unfortunate girl, why do you not whip me? Is it perhaps that you're afraid? Fred? Afraid that the people who listen to me will someday rise up against you? No. You're not afraid. But there is no need to make a martyr of you before your time. Besides, when the work of National Socialism is finished, there will be no one in the churches for the clergy to talk to, except themselves. Good morning, Bishop. What a pity barbarians have so little time for history. Tell me, Colonel, have you ever heard of Attila? Attila the Hun, the infamous leader of the Huns who murdered his own brother Bleda? who swept with fire and sword through Asia and Europe and ruled with bloody hands this very land we now call Germany? Well, Attila and his barbarians are gone. But the church remains. The church remains, Colonel. It is eternal. It is the will of God. No man can change it. came for honor at dawn. Before the whole camp, they marched her to the whipping post. She knelt there with her hands tied, her lips moving in a silent prayer. Carl Bruner was there, too. He'd been sent by Henkel to test his loyalty. His face was pale, his eyes half closed as if to shut out the awful sight. Shall I begin now, Herr Captain? Yes. Stop. Stop it! Stop it! Give me that whip! Hey, Captain! Have you ever tasted it? Now untie your hands. Do as I say, untie it! Oh, hey, Captain. Oh, God. I don't know matter what happens to you, Number I don't care what happens to me now. You know, this will be the end for both of us, don't you? I don't care. I'm not afraid. Honor, just once while there's still time, I want to tell you I was wrong, Anna, horribly wrong. And just once again, I want to tell you how very much I've loved you all the time. This isn't the moment to choose, Honor. But... But to the moment, my darling, linger a while. So fair thou art. Anna and Carl were placed in prison. I wasn't permitted to see them, of course, but Franz learned things for me. Franz, who had helped me once before. One night, he came to my apartment. Well, Nicky, Franz. What have you found out? Germany and Italy have signed a military alliance. No, I mean about Karl and Anna. Now, now you will see in the fall when the crops are in war. It has all been arranged. Franz! Tell me. Well, they have to die, of course. Die? Isn't there some way I could get them out? Even if we all got shot down at the border, it would be better. No, no, my friend, we wouldn't have a chance. They are valuable properties of the new order now and will be guarded as such. What do you mean? Captain Brunner has repented his sin against the state. I, I don't believe it, I know. But it's true, just as him. Colonel Henkel is very pleased. He will be able to make capital of his mistake. He will give his protege a fine trial where Karl will beg the youth of Germany not to follow his example. You know that boy is not a Nazi at heart. Oh, it will be a fine trial. Broadcast all over the country and at a good hour, too, when everybody can hear. Then they will give him a fine funeral with military honors. Why should Carl say he's repented to cover up for Colonel Henkel? He has to die anyhow. Ah, oh, you Americans will never understand us. Maybe it is the will to obey that is in us Germans. How easy to march and step once you have started. Where are they now? I understand they have put them together. At least near enough so they may speak. Hmm. It was a good Nazi trick. They let prisoners speak together. Then they make a record of everything that is said. Carl. Carl. Can you hear me? I have nothing to say to you, Anna. Carl. What have they done to you? 
I don't care what happens to me so long as you love me. But never stop loving me. I would be afraid then. Really afraid. I'm sorry, Anna. I lost my head. I didn't know what I was doing. I cursed the day I ever met you. Carl. I don't believe it. Today, Oliver Germany, by special permission of the Ministry of Propaganda, we bring you the trial of Captain Carl Bruner and Anna Miller. We're in the courtroom now. The defendants have just entered under guard. The prisoner, Captain Bruner, will be permitted to make an opening statement. Oh, Bruner, you have the right to make an opening statement, if you wish. Have you anything to say for yourself? I speak today not for myself, but for the youth of Germany. I speak as one who has learned a great lesson. Our Fuhrer, our beloved Fuhrer has often said that the future belongs to youth, and that the youth belongs to the future. And I know now how true that is. I beg you all to be warned by my example. I thought for a while it would be fun to be free, do just as I wish. I was willing to serve the Reich, but I was not willing to obey it in all things. Some things I wanted to decide for myself. Some things I said were no business of the right. Yes, and some things I put my will above that of the Fuhrer. From all this, I have learned a great lesson. And the lesson, in the words of a German poet, is this. Those who live for their faith shall behold it living. And my faith, my friends, is the faith of the great Goethe. If the whole world I once could see on free soil stand with the people free, then to the moment might I say, linger a while, so fair thou art. To the youth of Germany then I say, this is my lesson. This is the lesson of life. But this is not the lesson that you are learning in Germany today. You are not learning the lesson of life. Your education is the education for death. You do not live from day to day. You die from day to day. For to live is to be free. Have you any idea, my friends, what it's like to be free? Well, I'll tell you, for I was a free man once, and once you've had a taste of freedom, nobody can take it away from you. Quiet. It's like a breath of fresh air that lasts to eternity. Long live the enemies of Nazi Germany! <laughs> They died there in the courtroom. Carl and Anna, who wanted to be free. I left Germany then. True, the fires of the Nazi faith were still burning, and Hitler's children were still swearing to die for him. But to me, the fires didn't seem to burn so brightly, and the voices didn't come up quite so bravely. And as long as there are boys like Carl and girls like Anna, truth will never die in this world. For as the prophets of old used to say, the memory of virtue is immortal, and we have a long, long memory. From the land of Hitler's children, we return to the stage of the Lux Radio Theater. And a curtain call for Bonita Granville, Otto Kruger, Kent Smith, and Walter Reed. Thank you, C.B. It's a pleasure to be back here with three fine young players like my partners here. Young, he says. Eighteen years ago, I played a scene on the stage where a man held me close in his arms and kissed me. Lucky man. Who was he? My father. I was two years old. <laughs> then you've been an actor since you were two. No, Walter. I retired for a year when I was three but I found not working was pretty dull. <laughs> I must try that sometime. Now, take Otto Kruger. Between pictures, he does all kinds of magic with flowers and vegetables. What was that trick you did with a, a carnation, Otto? Oh, that was several years ago, C.B. I crossed a carnation with a petunia. Quite successful. <laughs> well, what came out? Sweet peas? No, Kent. I, I, I call it a cartoonia. <laughs> <laughs> So if you have a little cartoonia in your backyard, thank God, oh. Well, I'm more interested in vegetables right now, C.B. Well, tried crossing any of those? 
Well, I think I'll go to work on a combination of corn and lima beans. What do you expect to get, Mr. Kruger? Secretary. <laughs> oh, I fall for all those things. But there's one thing I can't be fooled on. That's the right way to take care of my complexion. I've been using Lux soap since I was a little girl, so I know it's right for me. Really, I couldn't get along without it. Well, no smart girl would even try to get along without Lux soap, Anita. That's right, Mrs. DeMille. And now it's time for you to answer a question. Yes, what is the Lux Radio Theater have next week, Mrs. DeMille? It's a paramount comedy hit that just can't miss. The name of the play is The Major and the Minor. And the stars, Ginger Rogers and Ray Moran. They're the same stars who made the picture such a great success. It's the story of a beautiful girl who poses as a child because she has only enough money for a half-fare ticket home. Complications like Ray Moland and a visit to a boy's military school give us a delightful play for next Monday night. Well, that was a wonderful picture, C.B. We've got a date. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. And I'll take you right out there to each of you. Ladies and gentlemen, America has some of the finest hospitals in the world. Can you imagine what those hospitals would be like without nurses or with half as many as there should be? Some of you remember the great influenza epidemic that swept the country during the last war. We don't want to fight another like that one with a scarcity of nurses. The plain facts are we, we just haven't gotten enough nurses. The supply is dangerously low right now. And many more will be required to save the lives of our fighting men. The solution is the immediate training of more nurses. So I'd like to urge the many thousands of girls who will graduate from high schools this year and their parents to investigate nursing as a career. For information, write to Student Nurses, Box 88, New York City. There's no finer calling than the saving of human lives. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ginger Rogers and Ray Land in The Major and the Minor. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from... Hollywood. Tonight's broadcast of Hitler's Children was based on the book Education for Death by Gregor Zemer. Bonita Granville's latest picture is Hitler's Children. Otto Kruger will soon be seen in the Saul Lesser production, Stage Door Canteen. Kent Smith is currently appearing in the RKO picture, This Land is Mine. Walter Reed is featured in the RKO picture, Bombardier. I'll repeat the address to which all girls interested in nurses' training may write for information. Here it is. Student Nurses, Box 88, New York City. Third in tonight's play were Norman Field as the bishop, Robert Harris as Dr. Graf, and Verna Felton, Leo Cleary, Claudia Dell, Charles Seal, Griff Barnett, Dix Davis, Regina Wallace, Fred Mackay, Cliff Clark, Carla Bohm, and Paul Hilton. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Ginger Rogers and Ray Milan in The Major and the Minor. Mothers, what kind of vitamins do you give your family in these days of food rationing and shortages? Make sure you get enough. Get Vims. Vims are scientifically designed to help make meals complete. They give you all the vitamins government experts say are essential, balanced in the formula doctors endorse. In addition, VIMS give you all the minerals commonly lacking. Get VIMS at your druggist. VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. VIMS. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.